the outside, this place just looks like a warehouse in the middle of a small town. But on the inside, it's a whole different story. We're building the coolest cars on the planet. And all of that is thanks to this guy right here. We've had a lot of success here over the years. I did my own cars for about four years. Did a lot of stuff with Hot Rod. Had early success, Hot Rod Car of the Year a couple times. And I came to Rad Rides the first time because it seemed like every time I opened up a magazine and was just totally knocked out by a car, it had Troy's name attached to it. He's had huge success in the past with building cars, and he's actually been on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine more than any other builder in the United States, which is saying a lot. In 96, I met George Poti at a car show, and that's what really turned it around. He was the first customer to come in here and let us have no boundaries. We did the sniper form in 96, and after that car, just I think it sent the message out that kind of the sky was limited. Whatever you can dream up, you can build it. It's not like, well, we're limited here and we're limited there. We never sacrifice time for an idea. We just make it done, or money. We just make it happen some way. You can't believe the stuff that comes out of this guy's head. He's a true visionary. We're making some hubcaps. Adapters for Manny's car because we've got these aftermarket wheels that he wanted, and uh, we're just trying to dress them up a little bit. So we found a Lincoln hubcap that off a new town car that's pretty cool, and we're making an adapter ring to uh, to hold it in there. Now we're going into another level. He's, he's got a great respect throughout the United States and the world for his techniques and building and customizing and giving cars that really unique look that most people can't reach. And now we're going to go to the salt. 69 Cuda Bonneville salt flat car. And that all came about. Got a phone call from George one day. He'd been going there for five years. He's like, hey, there's so much history out there. You need your name and history books out there. We were at Detroit Cobo Hall, and uh, me and George and John Meany and my dad were walking around, and we're like, hey, we, I wanna, we're going to do this thing. I want to do it around this four-cylinder engine. Because if we're going to do it, let's be unique with it, kind of to the Rad Rides thing. And then George said, well, I like 69 Barracudas, and he happened to have one, and that's a body style nobody messed with. So, I mean, it was just a couple guys walking around a car show putting ideas together, and within five minutes, we are you know, on the way back home, and he was having a car sent here. And, and then the reason the car worked was several things. All the footwork we've had over the years of, you know, in the industry and having manufacturers that are behind us. You know, I was able to call anybody and get all the information I needed. And, you know, that was a lot of people. And the biggest thing with building that car was taking everybody's information and using a little bit of it, finding out what to do, because that was a new era. The car was really going along good. The fabrication was uh, good. We were on track. Um, we got it powder coated, started putting it back together, the final assembly stuff. Um, still had pretty good time. Uh, and then we kind of run into a snag. The biggest thing is just going to be the wiring, trying to get it done. Because uh, I know you're busy on Ross's car, and my dad's too. There's no way my dad can crawl in there and do anything. I wasn't sleeping really well. <laughs> so um, that's going to be the biggest, probably the biggest hang up is getting it wired. We need, we need another guy, we need somebody that's going to be able to help us get this thing wired because hope you know it's going to be the end of the month hopefully the end of the month we'll be able to get up right. to Chrysler one day and put on the test track Red Rides Jackie hey Zimmy what are you doing buddy what's going on man well I was actually wondering uh, if you guys might be able to fit me in somewhere up there again uh, I was looking at coming back to work for you oh really Jared who used to work here uh, wired most of the cars the last three years and it was just a thing where my dad did it in the early years and then he kind of got to where he was, you know, didn't want to lay under the dashes anymore and we needed to teach somebody else. And Jack definitely could have wired the car, but probably wouldn't have been much fun. It was a phenomenal task and it took a guy like Jared with his knowledge, capability of laying things out and understanding electronics to, to really help us out on this project. Mmm, Mantino. Hey, buddy friend. Oh, it's cheap, all right, Al. Look who's lost, Al. It's old movie star pants here. What's hey, going hey, on, fellas? My dad mm -hmm. said you called him the other day, huh? Yeah. Oh. What did I tell you to be gone? About four months? It took so long. <laughs>
<laughs> I said four months. It's he actually has lasted longer than I thought. It's been like six months. It's hard to be away, man. We've been hitting it here. We need you. We need. Uh, we got a lot going on trying to get this thing done. And somebody pay you to say that? Well, yeah. Well, I'll replace you, so you're gonna have to go back to cutting my grass like you started. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whatever it takes, man. Man, I knew Troy would make it difficult, but I didn't know how difficult he was gonna make it. Well, just like the good old days. Oh, this sucks. So now that we got all that out of the way, it was time to get down to business. get to see this car and the, the respect this car has gained as a mechanical race car and, uh, and just because everything's in its place. A lot of the things we've seen in the past uh, don't reach this level and it's not a show car, it's a race car, but it's done the right way and things are where they belong. It's more like a Formula One car than the average salt car. All right, I open these up. Um, the battery lugs here. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is those are different. Yeah, I got these from Bickle, but what I'm thinking about doing is putting them like right here. Okay. You know, something like that. Boom, boom. Because then the go ahead and get them mounted, and then you know we need to come up to the battery, obviously. Figure out how we're gonna, you know, we always jump the batteries together. Mm-hmm. Figure that out, and then we'll we'll get my dad involved and ask him if we're gonna just run one. What we're gonna run forward? He you says know, we he need wants to go to the start. Like one or zero gauge going forward. He says he wants a big one. Okay. To make Meanie happy. Yeah, that's true. So we have, I think, some of that monster stuff, don't we? Yep. Okay. There's definitely something the up big. there. We'll need one going up dedicated for Meanie's box. I know that now. <laughs> right. So power and ground got to come directly from here. I guess first get those mounted, and then kind of figure out in your head where we need to jump around back here. Okay. And then what kind of ends we need to stack these cables we're doing or whatever we're doing. Right. And then. We'll figure out what's going forward and how to get it there once you get this established. Okay. What we should probably do, Jay, is paint this edge. Okay. Anytime yeah. we go through steel, okay. you know, because if it's gonna rust, it's gonna have a lot more of a chance out there to rust. Battery terminal make Jared angry. You know, Troy's so picky about how things are wired. I mean, you can't just put wires in the car. It has to look good. They can't go across any hard edges where they might get frayed. It's just, that's what takes so long. Well, the car's got two kill switches for safety. So if for some reason we can't get in Inside the car where the pilot's at, we can shut it off from back here. So I'm running a main battery cable from the first kill switch to the second one, which is inside the car. And then it'll go from there to the starter. Get that big promotion after this. You know, the one where I finally get a shirt back and maybe even a paycheck. Jay, so what did the judge say today? Me He's uh, for a half hour and went there to court again. <laughs> I, I, just, I like driving fast. I told him. I was That's like, right. hey. Do you remember it from that last time when you got five? <laughs> that was the same guy. Was was. Really? Oh, yeah, I remember him. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if you did. I'm like, hey, bud, let's get this over with. Crush. Crush. <clears throat> Good. This is heat shrink tubing. You heat it up and it has like a glue inside that seals it from moisture and everything else. Protects the end of the cable, the end of the crimp. Oh, it's radical stuff, man. Radical. So I was working again, but Troy wouldn't let me feel like part of the team. Troy! What? Can I have a shirt? Nope. You're getting closer, maybe tomorrow.
This is ridiculous. You get this battery cable stuff done, stay late, and in the morning I'll give you a shirt. I don't think so. Is that a deal? You gotta wear real shoes tomorrow too, no you slippers. Me, you don't like these shoes? Them slippers? Are we dancing or building cars here? <laughs> We're bending some garbage lines so we can make some nice line doing a pre, pre-fit with regular old brake line, fuel line. And then we'll do it out of stainless once we get, uh, get everything exactly the way we want it. We'll copy it on stainless lines so that way we don't have a problem with wasting stainless line. Feel it. I had no feeling in my oh. This one's for Daryl Waltrip. Corey, isn't that what it says on it? Did you ever notice that? It's his old tranny out of one of the cars he ran. Because it's a NASCAR tranny. Why is he wearing a Lamborghini shirt right there? I like, I like oh, probably because you haven't given me one like, Rad Ride shirt like to wear. Kids. He wouldn't give me a shirt, but he didn't like the one I was wearing. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Go in naked? When Jared came back, you know, I had to, he kept giving me a hard time wanting my shirt back, wanting my shirt back. So everything I always did with him, I made him beg a little bit. So I thought I had a good idea. Shimmy up there, Moose, and get him a polo. Yeah, Moose, just shimmy up there. <sighs> I don't crawl. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Well, I got a girl one. Put oh, it on. Okay, yeah, thanks. That's where you got to start. That's a right? nice V-neck. You got to wear the yeah. girl shirt for a day. <laughs> you got to wear it for a day. Then my little bit of chest. No, no, right no, 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 that's, no, I'm not wearing that. No, no, no. All right, that's, fine. Give it to me. I'll put it on. That's where you give start. That's, that's where you all right. start. When you come back, you got to start at the bottom. No, no, hang on. Dan, it'll look like that shirt we wear when he goes out. That stretchy thing. He wants to be a tough guy. There you go. Yeah. Come get you some of this. Yeah. Yeah. We knew Jared would look good in that shirt and make him run around in it for a day and uh, and see if anybody walked in that knew him and just have fun with it. So he was a good sport about it and uh, you know it's all harmless fun, but he can handle it. So that's why. Yeah, <laughs> you got to wear that all day. All right, that's fine. And fun. then you get your regular shirt. <laughs> Should have done my setups this morning. Girls' hey. underwear too. Come here. I reinstated oh, Jared today. I gave him his red right shirt back, but he's got to wear this for a day. Come here, Levi. Adam, come here. Jay's reinstated. Say about that. <laughs> you want some of this. Good out of you gotta wear this for one day. That's enough. I'm concentrating on working here. Oh, it's funny. Yeah. Dude, where is the gym? All right. You guys seen the gym? Ugh. Should have did my sit ups this morning. Hit that a couple is, reps. That's the best, isn't it? Hey, honey, give me he a six-pack. He should have an arrow on his back and her here. Welcome to high school. I'm be your football coach this year. Let me tell you a thing or two. Two things I do not tolerate. That is men who squat to pee and boys that go home before practice is over. I don't care if your fist is broke, your face is ripped off. You will run the ball into the end zone. Do it. <sighs> My personality. I'm gonna leave the cord hanging like that. I guess it's gonna have to do because we ain't got time to do it any other way. Yeah, it looks good. Do you think it needs another thingy? No, no. Does it feel rigid enough? Three's enough that ain't going nowhere. Yeah. That's gonna be. Too, you're only gonna touch it when it's sitting still, and then we're not gonna touch it again. Okay. He's got such a personality. He can talk anything. You know, he can sell himself on anything, but sports is where he's his weakest. So anytime we'd ever shoot baskets or throw a ball around or something, it was like watching a, you know, a, <laughs> I don't know what the right word is, but it's it was funny to watch. We gotta get him a shirt. He's killing me. Ty, yeah, up. please. Sc scurry up that ladder there. Shimmy up that ladder. So it was, you know, I knew he'd do it. So when he come in, you know, and just seeing his physique, and I just wanted my wife to come and, you know, hopefully come in there and see him because he. Uh, only he could look that good in that shirt. This is what I'm talking about. There you about. go, Biggie. Well, that's a little bit more like it. Maybe tomorrow you'll get more done wearing about that shirt. About time. L for little guy. Don't rip the buttons out, I'm bud. I'm just excited. Oh, yes. So I let them have their fun. I finished up the wiring, and I finally got a shirt.
I have knocked the head off of a fly and left his body intact. Look at that, there's his little head, and there's his little body. Come on, little, whoa, he's gonna go for a fly. Ty, check this shit out. What? I knocked the head off this fly. No there, way. There's no, there's his head. Oh, <laughs> he's still alive, check him out. What the, <laughs> is he a cricket now? No, he just only flies for short little bits. He's gotta have a turd hanging out. That's like the creepiest thing I've ever seen. I know, it. the weirdest part is that it flies. All right, get back to work. I sent Jared down to uh, Farm and Fleet as a uh, farm store that we have. We're looking for a two inch wrench for this big tubing that we're doing. It's kind of neat because it's a 180 cubic inch four cylinder, but we're running an inch and a quarter fuel line to it. And uh, the, the Dash 20 stuff we're using, it takes a two inch wrench on the nut. So we had to go to a farm store to get a wrench big enough. I got the smallest wrenches I could find. <laughs> Now that's some fuel line wrenches there. I want it to be safe. When you work on four cylinders, you need large tools. They weigh about 30 pounds a piece. That's awesome. So it fits work. anyway. Yeah, maybe we'll, we may end up cleaning it up, you know, shorten the way up so we can get it in there to tighten them, but. Wrench modification. At least that'll work. Just give us about that much too. And then thin the ears out on it, you know, something like this, because I know it's going to be a problem, I'm sure. And a chip foose wrench designer. That's right, look at that, huh? Okay. Writing my name. Writing the name. Damn, I just ran out of gas. Don't forget to flush now. Now wash your hands. This is the first tool I ever bought. It's built every car. Even though it's junk, we keep it around. We just gotta get pre Hey, where have you been? What are you talking about? All morning I've been here. You go and you say stuff like that to me. 11 o'clock? I had a bunch to do this morning. Yeah? Here. Take a hit of that this no, morning. Thanks. Take a hit and I won't bother you. Seriously? One hit. And I won't you even say nothing to the rest of the day. One hit and I'll leave you alone all day. Gee, I told him if he just takes one hit, I'll leave him alone. I won't even bug him about being late the rest of the day. Well, I'm soft on him today. Uh -huh. Come on. <laughs> really, the neat thing about the car is it's 179 cubic inch, and it's a mix of parts. It's a USAC midget block with a pro stock truck head, a Hemi head. So basically, it's a half a Hemi. You know, the estimates we had on horsepower before we went to the dyno were 1,100, 1,200 horsepower. Anybody can do it. That's yeah. right, this is so easy. Uh -huh. All the magic's been happening in the last five months of trying to make get pieces that will work with each other. It's hard to comprehend how critical what everything is on it. That's a great engine. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of them 350 horse small car crate motors. That's right. Yeah, the neon block. We just changed the pistons. That's and right. And <laughs> That's put right. a hair dryer yeah. on it. Right. You got that plus and minus on the battery yet, Jay? Not yet, no. I'm still, uh, I'm... Don't let me get in the way. Just hook it up real quick. Well, I think I'm short of wire. I need to probably I'm gonna have to go to the store and get engaged. Put that door and see if Bob's in there. 
Oh, you ran it all to the battery? I just ran it straight to the battery, though. Even, oh, the Switch 12, yeah. Sorry. I'm You're going to have to put yeah. that in there so you can shut the motor off. That's what shuts it off? Okay. It's yeah, we're not going to walk out here every time. Let's say it's blazing on fire. We're not going to yeah. walk in the cell here and go. Well, I didn't know how you were going to shut it off. Smell that. Oh man. It's like that uh, stuff I made Jared drink. I ain't lying. <laughs> That's a gas meter. I mean, probably should stop the kick. How come you don't sweat, Taylor? I don't know. Not to be used with gasoline containing ethanol. Well, we're all right because we have ethanol containing gasoline. Ethanol is acid corrosive. Um, ethanol, I'm not. I don't. We don't know a lot about it. I know it's it's not as uh, deadly to you because I mean, literally, you could you could drink it. The two percent gasoline wouldn't hurt you. Oh, that's wangy. Did you taste it? Yeah, that is. It's Go ahead, really and dump sweet. it in there, Jay. Just slow down at the top. That's ten gallons, just so we don't. It's 130 octane. There's seriously yeah. black chunks coming out of here. Huh? That pump makes a bet on you. Really? Why, why ethanol though? Chunks. I don't know. Because uh, methanol is so corrosive. What are you doing, uh, we, they want to spin the crank easy so we can check the clearance. And then uh, when we prime the oil pump, it'd probably be easier. Or it wouldn't matter, would it? Because we're going to be off. Yeah, we can just take the belt off for the oil pump. Dummy. Well, Dummy. Okay, thank you, big. So this notch that's in there, clearly it's got to go deeper. See how clear that black sand is? Hmm. What is this, some bitching thing? Tell you how heavy this stuff is? Yes, it's a shot glass. What was it, Jack? Now we're there. I'm gonna, depending on how long we run it, we might, I don't know if we're gonna take it all apart tonight or not to bring it back, because I mean, there's so much that you couldn't believe it if I even sent you a picture. Oh. oh yeah, he's tuning on a computer, so. Okay, all right, I'll talk to you later.
probably got some fume in there and uh, right by the exhaust. Well, might have went pop. No, that would have been positive and poofed it out the other way. I don't know. The breather had some fumes on it. It probably moved another. Eh, 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 eh. Let me pull the plugs out of it again. Look at it. Or? Right. Him what we did. I said it was hiccuping a little bit. Bob and Pete thought you know, it was missing a little bit, and uh, so we looked at everything. Everything mechanically was fine, and we, and I told him that uh, we my dad was on the way, so we thought, well, we'd try the ECM. So we fired it up, and I, I told him, you know, Bob and Pete had been had their feeling about it, and they both looked at it and thought it seemed happier, like it was gone. So we piddled around with some light stuff, then we made a full hit on it. And, you know, and it made good power and was smooth. What we ended up doing on the dyno, because of time frames, we didn't spin it as hard, so roughly made about 1,000 horsepower at 8,000 with 25 pounds of boost, and made a short pull with the thing, and at 30 pounds of boost at 6,500, it made 950. So that showed us big increases. We're making 45 horsepower per 100 above 65. What I'm saying is the data that we have, we know right now, at, at, if we wouldn't blow the hoses off, we know we'd have you know 1,200 horsepower, but be, what we have is at 25 pounds, we know where we're at, about 950. So if we had you know a month, and we're in this position, it'd be different. That's we, my problem. I've that. been there, man. I've been at John's place and taken the crankshaft back out of shit because it's laying on the ground. Yeah. I did that with my Buick. Yeah. Through the, thank God we. Let's take the jets there. out of the nitrous. I've been there. <laughs> You're up in the attic with a fire extinguisher because the valves are up there when the rafters are smoking. Yeah. Let's put another 300 to it. The one guy went wow. there, but they ran his motor, made like, you know, pretty good power. It was a three stage nitrous motor, EFI. This is way back in like the late 80s. Ran it. They're all pumped up, and the guy goes, "I'm gonna go get some beer." So he goes and gets beer. They take the jets out of the out of the pill or the pills or jets out of the nitrous and go another 300, and they come back and they're in the roof because it blew the whole top end off, <laughs> threw up into the drywall, and the valves were smoke the smoldering in the rafters up that in the attic. Hilarious! And the guy comes back. <laughs> yeah, <and they're> like, <laughs> oh, just the whole top of the motor's gone. Oh man! Oh yeah. Jay, you're the best. I know, I know. Man. Just come to my autograph signing at noon. I don't care what your mom All said. Right, that's good. You're Thanks, the Al. Best. You're the best. No, you're the best. You're the best, buddy. You're the best. You're a champ. You're the hero, you're buddy. You're a real champ. You're the best. You're a ball player. Buddy friend hero guy I've ever seen. Man, I know it. Close. Hey, you don't ride on my belly. <laughs> I'll set you on fire. <laughs> Here, let's try it. I don't.
we made the headers out of 321 stainless, which is a um, stainless with a lot of titanium in it. And they heat cycle good. They won't get brittle from getting hot and cold. And then HPC put this new F1 coating on here, which is 2,500 degrees, I think. But we're just trying to keep, because our engine compartment's so closed up for aerodynamics, we're just trying to keep the, all the heat out of the engine compartment that we can. Fuel pressure get up to. This thing's fragged. Uh, well look, look in there. Oh, here's the problem. Somehow this got unplugged. Points wire. Take the kill ignition, Troy. Okay. Off. This is gonna take a minute. Okay. Ready? Four cylinder. Jesus Holy <laughs> shit. That thing's got a ear piercing at two inside here at 2000. Really? <laughs> I just want you to hear it. As soon as we got there on Friday morning on the on the salt, it uh, it overwhelms you. It, it's so gorgeous. It's just a beautiful place. And it's like another part of the planet, or maybe you're not on the same planet. There's a lot of Mars out here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But the first moment I saw it, I'd, I'd go back again if I never saw a car race, just to, to experience the pits and the people. Uh, it's it is where hot rodding really truly began and it, and part of that is in that spirit of the salt i believe what do you got here mad max beyond dumpster dome that's crazy when you go over there and look out into the track i think that mountain's about from the starting line it's at least nine or ten miles damn that's kind of where they aim out at you go that direction yeah you, you know it's out over there you know yeah <laughs> Hello? God damn it. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Okay, good. 
I was just telling you, there's nothing out here that, that shows you what time period it is. I mean, it could be 1940, you know? Man, the salt. Say about that. I say, it's pretty goddamn cool. Let's get the plug out and see if we can get a different plug. Well, going to Bonneville, we knew George was driving a streamliner also. We were going to wait till Monday probably before we'd have a run. But we had an opening on Saturday to tech the car, so we're like, yeah, let's go over there. We ran our car through tech for the first time, and uh, it was pretty interesting. We started out with two inspectors, which is how it's supposed to be per car, and we ended up with about 10 or 12. Every, they were all just coming down, kind of checking it out because of the engineering and stuff, and didn't find too much. Just a lot of little piddly things that we think are fine, but according to their rules, we just got to add a few little things. A lot of their rules are just derived from past experience, so we got to add some hose clamps to some of these hoses, which there's no way they could ever blow off. We need a battery box and a few things, but nothing, nothing too bad. The uh, Two tech inspectors at the end pulled us off to the side and said it was one of the nicest engineered cars they'd ever seen, so that was kind of nice. That's why they kind of go. What? Bottom door. I would just have to replace these pieces and then uh, have them come over here and reinspect it. So then we'll be good and they'll certify it. there. Well, how come it don't register? I go, you got to turn the valve on. That's that old boy. <laughs> I'm like, he goes, well, what's that silver thing? Do I go, that bleeds it off when you're done. He goes, what's that for? I said, it's for the wastegate. What's the wastegate? 
I said, that's on the turbocharger. I said, we put air pressure on the back to fool the spring so we have more boost. Huh. <laughs> that's what he said to me. He goes, that's nitrous? I go, no, it's CO, it's compressed air. He <laughs> goes, what did the one guy ask you? Where'd you get all this metal? Yeah. The guy's asking him, though. Where did you get all this steel from? What do you mean? Well, for, do you mean for the chassis? Or? No, no, for all the body and everything. Well, it's a Barracuda. It's a 69 <laughs> Barracuda. Yeah. From the cow back, it's stock. I think he was feeling if it was thinking it was fiberglass or something. I'm not for sure. Yeah. We well, can't run a glass here at the top. Why would you? I know, yeah, I don't know. What's happening, man? Hi. How you doing? <laughs> you made it. Yeah, we're here, man. We're here. Uh, get through inspection? Eh, pretty well. They got us on a few things, so. What? Just uh, hose clamps on the push locks on all my atmospheric vents and. On what? Mm -hmm. They want yeah, it's 400 psi. You That's a even, vent. You can't even. You know get it is. That off here. And then on all my suction lines on my oil, I ran that because it's thicker wall. You know, don't suck shut, and it's spring. It's got the spring in it, and they want clamps on all that. And then. Uh, uh, what else? Oh, a uh, plastic battery box around the batteries. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's their Optimas. The hardest part about being at Bonneville the first three days was waiting. We knew we weren't going to run till Monday, so you're seeing all this stuff run, and you know some go fast, some wreck, you know some not run, you know, and you're just racing all this stuff through your mind. And once we actually finally got in line, I wasn't as nervous because it's like you know what it's it's, it's gonna I know it's gonna run, you know, and, and uh, we're just gonna see what it can do. I mean, we got to start somewhere. After a year and a half's work and a million phone calls and stress, and uh, it, it was about time for the real world to, to happen to us. And every, the whole world was watching us that day just to see if we were going to do all right or be a failure or whatever. It's pretty exotic. Is that a celebrity over there? Or is it really nice looking car. Thank the way you. It's got out. It's beautiful. Thank you. They pulled his foot through there. That's where it slid up the dash, so we added that. Okay, so they, we've in. already had this conversation. This yeah, guy. and that's, that's why we added that. And then, this guy walks up and he's messing with the car, and you know, so Adam and I went over and just asked if we could help him. He said, some stranger fooling the car, and he said, no, he was helping us. And we said, with what? And he said, the car hadn't passed tech. I said, well, yeah, it has. And he said, oh, no, it hasn't, because he's chairman of something. I'm not sure what, but had an official title. So he started messing around with it and saying that uh, George's leg could fall out of the car. He decided we needed more netting or we weren't going to run. If it had a complete window net, you don't need that other piece to keep George's leg in. Exactly. So we, we followed the rules again and we made the netting. Yep. Time to stop talking. 
<laughs> See if it's got any balls. <laughs> I know I do. I'm already hey. in a tube. <laughs> nervous when you're talking about the shoots and here you tell my man. John. What does John think about though? Me. I want to show him. I told him about it. He's like anything Bosch does is good. in a way until he was sitting in it at the starting line and uh, we fired it up and he kind of looked over at me with his eyes you know we revved it up and he, it was just pretty awesome and then uh, really at that point I wasn't nervous at all. And...
He just broke the record on the short course. That is unreal. That's the fastest car I've heard of on the short course. Oh. Yeah, let's go, man. Let's put We're okay, it's just header. It's just going, header. You're going 236 towards I know it's just header. It's not on fire, it's just header. It's header around. It's header around. It's header around. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. first time we ever got on the car was 195 in the first mile, which was, man, I mean, we knew it was flying. They read off the next time was 220 something, and we were high-fiving each other in the truck, and then the next number was 236, and I mean, it was just like, son of a gun, I'm, we never expected it. <laughs> when we broke the record, it was real gratifying. To, it was another experience with your son, and being a part of it, because a lot of fathers don't get to share that with their sons uh, for whatever reason. And you just couldn't get down there fast enough to talk to George and just say, hey, what do you think? Because he was giving me a hard time that his Starliner would have a faster time slip than the Cuda, and obviously that, that didn't happen. It was the fattest thing I've ever seen, Dad. Oh, man. You know, all that effort, all that hard work, man. And to go out the very first time and just cold smash it. He was supposed to go 150, and then 170 to qualify the car. But, I mean, I can only imagine the adrenaline rush, so he just wound that sucker up, man. Oh, God, damn it. Get out there. Keep the bracket. Go ahead. Jaeger, how's that for a first time? Hey, baby, huh? Look like a smoke screen going down through there. That's how there's no there. There was, there was there's a mix. This came off. That's only good for 400 anyway, though. That, or probably 600 at the most. Yeah, that's, I mean, that probably that's had to be Yeah, that had to be. But it doesn't bother that coating, man. Look at that. That's 2,500 after that coating. Doesn't even bother. They come out and run inside the car when the exhaust goes. That needs to get lined up better. That's what we're working on. And it needs to be foil. Maybe that foil stuff's good for 2,000, I think. This stuff like this. Uh -huh. In the future, make the exhaust where it runs through the car inside of a tool. Right. Yeah, hindsight. Yeah. I mean, I'm just yeah, saying, know, yeah. he's just spitting it out. All right. I'm doing is telling him. Back here, I'm trying to do the back one here. Uh -huh. uh, you've got to feed that, man. So it's probably not going to be able to do it. Hold on. Hold on. There. We've got low pressure in the wheel wells. We can pull out the seal. Okay. I'm here. We'll get some air flow. I guess the best way to sum it up is we had our customer, Roger Ritzau, was out there with us, and he was down at the three mile with a lot of guys. And when I got down there, he was actually crying. I mean, that's how, how awesome it was, you know? And I mean, even his car. Well, this car is a phenomenal piece. We, we were experimenting actually and still pretty much crashed a record that had been stood for 16 years. And now we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at all our data and we're gonna take some things apart and look at them. Uh, it's a phenomenal race car we haven't even scratch the surface we feel and our, our next goal will be to push the envelope and go over 300 mile an hour and eventually make this the fastest door slammer car ever on the show.